Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is September 22nd, and right now we're looking at the mid-level water vapor loop. Check out the upper-level low spinning over Oregon, Idaho, kicking off some thunderstorms across Wyoming, Montana, and up across some of uh, Idaho as we speak right now. Some pretty heavy rain ongoing through, through this morning into the early afternoon hours. As you can see, you need to see this cloud cover kind of spinning around that upper level low. But we're looking at a pretty nice day here coming up for western Washington, western Oregon, and southwest BC. If you look out across the ocean, you can see the next system. It's going to be rolling in here during the day tomorrow, moving up towards Vancouver Island, bringing some precipitation across the area, and then off to the uh, way off to the west here. There's going to be this atmospheric river moving across south of the Aleutian Islands as we speak. It's going to round this trough here and explosively develop. It's going to go through a pretty rapid deepening phase as it probably drops about 27 millibars in a 24-hour period, reaching that bomb cyclone category status off the coastline, pointing a powerful atmospheric river into the Pacific Northwest. We'll take a look at those precipitation precipitation totals and some wind for some of the coastal areas here as well. This is looking off into the western Pacific. There's Japan here. There's the Aleutian Islands. And this is that slug of moisture here that's going to round that trough and bring the powerful atmospheric river into the Pacific Northwest. And here we are looking at it on the European last night's run. Here is that moisture there. This is precipitable water anomaly percent of normal. And there it goes. And you can see it rounding the trough there. And you can see that deep low pressure center develop right off of Vancouver Island, Haida Gwaii there, and that atmospheric river moving into Washington, Oregon, sagging down towards California as well. Then we have another system after that that looks like it comes through at some point on Tuesday and on into Wednesday morning. So we'll be watching that one closely as well. And some of the models are showing continuing trough after that we'll look at that briefly here also looking at SeaTac yesterday 70 degrees right at average check it out no precipitation very nice day out there and we're probably headed for the mid 70s today so get out there and enjoy that it might be the last fairly warm day here for a while and we're going to start kicking up the precipitation amounts and hopefully we can end this month above average 1.61 the average uh, precipitation for SeaTac for September if you want affordable home weather station click on that link down below to save 10% off all solar powered all wireless no batteries stores all the data for you in the cloud i gave one away yesterday but i need this person to contact me m jorn the youtube channel contact me on youtube or email me otherwise by noon today i will go on down to the next old person on the list and then also i'm giving away so to one to a member here so if you are a member of the channel you're automatically entered i'll be doing that drawing today and announced by tomorrow morning at the latest you can click join down below the video there if you want to ever become a member of this channel and check it out precipitation forecast nice graphic here from the national weather service seattle as you can see burn scar areas are a flood risk here you can see the ash and burnt topsoil here allows for that runoff to really be enhanced here when the precipitation falls yeah so heads up for that and especially across southwest oregon here where the fires have been burning for the last few months and you can see the hydraulic outlook here for medford oregon flash flooding in the burn scar areas are possible here with this heavy precipitation incoming now, looking at precipitation forecast, Western Washington, again, from the National Weather Service area, good graphic, and you can see the heavier amounts along the coastline, the Olympic Mountains here, but you could get up towards an inch for some of the Cascades, maybe for Seattle. We'll take a look at the ensemble runs here on that in a moment. This is for Portland National Weather Service. You can see Portland, Eugene, Kelso, and Newport here. You can see the... Uh, generally how much we're expected to get here Sunday night through Monday and you can see Portland right around an inch Eugene maybe a little more Kelso around an inch as well Newport maybe higher amounts up over an inch and a half there nice graphic here showing the uncertainty and just how much precipitation we may or may not get this is chance of 1% precipitation. You can see Coos Bay, Cape Blanco, Gold Beach here in southwest Oregon. Grants Pass, 50-50 chance there. Medford, a little bit less there. And, of course, for the go east of the Cascades, your chances for precipitation drop off pretty well here. The atmospheric rivers are usually pretty low line. They get wrung out in the terrain features. Crescent City also getting in the action there as well. This is Pocatello. Check it out. Frost advisory at that chilly upper level low there. As we go into Saturday morning, this overnight lows approaching freezing. Idaho Falls, Rockland, Burley out there. Now looking at that atmospheric river, you can see a fairly strong one. But at this point in the year, the only, the only threat really is for the burn scar areas with ongoing fires. Otherwise, this is extremely beneficial. And I'll show you some graphics here towards the end of the video that show that we've been exceptionally warm and exceptionally dry here across a lot of the Pacific Northwest for the last three months. Here we go, total precipitation in inches in the NAM3 cam. Look at that upper level low spinning and dropping some fairly nice amounts of precipitation across some of Idaho into the Idaho Panhandle, Montana, Wyoming. And then the next system starts to roll in here as we go through the day tomorrow. We're going to cool down quite a bit here. 
across the area, maybe a couple tenths of an inch of rain for Seattle there, more along the coastline. But then that atmospheric river, the stronger system, you can clearly see it out here at the end of the run on the NAM 3KM 60 hours out. This would be Sunday afternoon as that next storm system developing off the coastline approaches. Here we go with the European on the left versus the GFS on the right. We're starting to get pretty good model consolidation. There goes the system on Saturday into Vancouver Island. Fairly weak, at least comparing it to the next storm here. Probably bombs out here just to the south and west of Haida Gwaii. 964 millibar low there, 965 on the GFS. So yeah, pretty good agreement on the position of this low and it creeps up towards Vancouver Island, some blustery conditions. And you could get some gusts up towards 50 miles per hour in the northwest Washington coast along Vancouver Island towards Haida Gwaii, some of western BC as well. And then another system here on the southern periphery of that will spin up towards Vancouver Island according to the European. You can see the GFS starts to disagree on the placement and the track of that low pressure center towards the Oregon coast here as we go through later Tuesday night. And then we'll worry about what's coming after that as we go through the next couple of days. But I'll show you what the GFS says, some model disagreement on what's to come. This is total precipitation, chances of at least an inch here. And you can see the red does 90% or higher, but you can see some of Western Washington is Seattle about 80 to 90% chance there. But of course, better along the coastline, Vancouver Island, some of the Cascades here as well. And virtually no chance for Eastern Washington, Oregon out of this next system. Atmospheric River will get wrung out nicely into the higher terrain. This is total precipitation in inches on last night's European run. Upper level low, you can see spinning off towards the Intermountain West. And then the Saturday system and then the Atmospheric River and the better precipitation chances here as we go on into the early portion of the week with potentially a couple systems rolling through here, then maybe even some more off into the extended. But this goes out through about Wednesday night here. You can see about one point two inches for Seattle here, maybe somewhere around an inch for Spoke, uh, Portland here. Uh, and you can see not much for Spokane and eastern portions here. You can see the rain shadowing effect clearly, but bigger amounts along the coastline and across Vancouver Island. This is looking at Seattle Tacoma GFS total precipitation plume in inches. This is the blue control run. <clears throat> then you can see we're getting some pretty good agreement between the control and the ensemble mean here up over two inches by the time you get towards Tuesday night, at least according to the GFS as of last night, the 06Z run. This is the European getting up towards two inches as well by the time you get towards Wednesday morning here, a little bit lesser amounts. You can still see we've got some decent disagreement between the ensemble members here on just how much precip is going to fall. This is the GFS 24-hour precip here, and it, it's showing up over an inch here as we go through the day Monday into Monday night here. So we'll be watching that one closely. The European, a little bit less, as you see. It doesn't really show. Some of the installment members show over an inch in a 24-hour period, but you can see the control shows about a half an inch here by the time you get towards Wednesday morning. So still some disagreement within the ensemble members on the European, at least. Uh, Storia off on the coastline there. You can see ensemble in the mean and the, uh, well, the ensemble and the control are in pretty good agreement here, about two inches here as we go through the day Wednesday. Brookings, Oregon, also nice shot of rainfall for southwest Oregon. Hopefully not too much at one time for a lot of the burn scar areas. This is up on Vancouver Island. Check it out, 50 centimeters is about two inches, and this is 24 hours. So yeah, pretty good precipitation maker here for much of the Vancouver Island area. And again, Vancouver Island, some gusty winds can be expected with this system as well. This is Quileute. Some of the ensembles have 50 plus. But for the most part, showing gusts into the 40s, mid 40s here. Pretty good fall bluster, late September storm system rolling through here. This is Hoquiam, probably some gusts up towards 40 miles per hour as well. Seattle Tacoma showing something in the 30s here, but the control run showing a little bit less, not even, you know, maybe some upper 20s or 30 miles per hour. But we'll see. Uh, you know, it's not a big wind maker here. This is not the preferred track for big wind storms for the interior portions of western Washington or western Oregon coming up. Tillamook, you can see some gusty conditions, maybe into the low 40s there. Portland, and not too much to worry about here as well. Maybe some low 30s. But now looking at the GFS, last night's run versus itself on the previous run yesterday afternoon. So there goes Saturday system there. And then the deeper low develops here. You can see this is 500 millibars, 18,000 feet. Deep trough out over the Pacific Ocean. Then the secondary system swings through here. Pretty good agreement to that point. But then watch what happens here. You can see the trough developing further off the coastline on the previous run versus kind of the troughing just hanging out across Pacific Northwest. But watch as we go out further, 200 plus hours now. Now we're 240. And look at the big ridge building on the GFS as we go through early October versus the troughing it had on the previous run. So that's one reason why you don't take deterministic runs at face value as you're looking off into the extended. They can change quite a bit. Ensemble's a much better way to look at things when you look in the 10 plus day period. Now, this is a national blend of models here. Look at today. 
nice mid and upper 70s western Washington, potentially up towards 80 degrees for some of Western Oregon. And you can see that the, the temperature is suppressed here because that upper level low and the clouds spinning across the Intermountain West. And then we go through tomorrow, warm up a little bit actually here through Idaho and portions of Montana as that upper level low kicks out. But as we go through tomorrow, you notice the drop for western Washington and western Oregon. Clouds are moving overhead as the next system comes in. And then we kind of stay into the 60s. My time into midweek, we're into the lower 60s here. So you definitely feel this fall, this pattern change as we go through the upcoming week. This is 6 to 10 day. You can see the above average signal through October 1st. October 1st temperatures, west coast bullseye for below average and I showed this yesterday as well. This is a drought monitor. Look at this extreme drought got extended all the way down through King County here, including Snoqualmie Pass. And they introduced some extreme drought to Western Oregon, Cascades, Foothills, even some of the I-5 corridor and the coastal range there as well. And it looks like they have Seattle now in the severe drought also. But hopefully we can make some short work of this and bring some of this precipitation in here with this next atmospheric river and wipe out some of the extreme drought pretty quick and hopefully knock down that severe and moderate drought also. But yeah, interesting stuff there. That drought monitor was issued, I believe, a couple days ago now. And this is looking at a percent of average precipitation over the last three months. Look at how extremely dry Western Washington and Oregon have been have been T between 25% and 50% for most of the area, some area less than 25% here. So yeah, we've been pretty dry. And this is the tropical storm Hillary that moved up across California, Nevada, Eastern uh, Oregon and Idaho. They're bringing some abnormally high amounts here for this time frame, June 24th through uh, 4th through uh, September 21st. And this is temperature as well. We've been above average, you know, two to four degrees. So for much of Western Washington, Oregon, including Eastern portions as well. So yeah, it's been warmer than normal and drier than normal here across Pacific Northwest. So anyway, I've got the El Nino video. It's almost ready to go. I'll probably be releasing it at some point tonight. And again, the weather station, if you uh, won that one yesterday, go to the uh, community tab there on the YouTube page and let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to give it to the next person down the line. And I'm doing another drawing today for members of the YouTube channel. And yeah, you'll automatically be entered there. So yeah, I look forward to announcing that by tomorrow morning, the latest as well. So anyway, I hope you guys are liking these videos. I will talk to you guys again today and, and I'll announce that weather station winner tomorrow as well. So anyway, I hope you guys are having a good day. Enjoy that last day here across Western Washington, Oregon, Southwest BC of the warm temperatures. Hopefully you have the day off or you can get out there and enjoy some of that. But anyway, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Actually, I'll talk to you tonight and then again tomorrow with the normal briefings.